Duckett's Grove House is the ruins of a large stately house located in the town's land of Palatine, or maybe it's pronounced Palatine, maybe you locals could help me with that one, in County Carlow. It was built in 1745 and was once the centre of a 12,000 acre estate owned by the Duckett family. It's now operated as a park by Carlow County Council. Admission is free and I'm heading there to take some photos. I hope you'll come along with me for the journey as I explore some compositions, lighting and take a brief look at the history of this once magnificent house. One piece of advice I would offer, it's only about 9k from Carlow and 6k from Junction 5 on the M9 but it's very difficult to find and I strongly advise just put it into Google Maps and follow the phone. Once you get into the vicinity it's easily recognisable by the grandiose gates that surrounded the once magnificent estate. Now I thought the ones at Bally Sagard were grandiose until I saw these. These are absolutely magnificent but I will leave a link up above there to my previous video on Bally Sagard War Towers. Once you go through the gates you still have about a kilometre of a drive on what was once I suppose the driveway to the house from the, uh, the estate. The car park is in the back so just drive past the house itself and then turn right. The first of the Duckets arrived in Ireland during the Cromwellian Moors in the mid 1600s. They were apparently well to do and descendants of no less than William the Conqueror and King Edward I. Thomas Duckett purchased a large holding of land in Palatine, County Carlow in 1695 and eventually Duckett's Grove Mansion was built on an estate of more than 12,000 acres in 1745. The structure was built as a two-storey over a basement house. The house features numerous towers and turrets of various shapes with one tall octagonal viewing tower which in its prime consisted of niches and hollows in the walls which contained statues and other ornamental figures. The Duckett descendants married well increasing the wealth of the family and there's a connection back to my Dunhill Castle video, linked above, in that Thomas Duckett married Judith de la Poire, or one of the powers from Waterford as we'd know them. Judith de la Poire was the heiress of the wealthy Pierce de la Poire from County Waterford. The Duckets were apparently well respected in Carlow and were appointed to positions such as Justice of the Peace and High Sheriff in the first half of the 1800s. William Duckett was the last blood heir to the Duckett's Grove and he died in 1908. William was married to Maria Georgina Duckett who eventually left the mansion to live in another residence in Dublin around 1916. The estate was purchased by 28 local farmers with a loan from the Bank of Ireland but they were unable to agree the division of the land and the loan remained unpaid for up to two years. The Land Commission took over the estate until finally in 1930 the 28 farmers repurchased the land. Duckett's Grove was used as a base for training by the Irish Republican Army in the early 1920s following the War of Independence. In 1933 the interior of the house was destroyed by fire and has been inaccessible since. The ruins of the mansion with two wall gardens and some small craft shops are now managed as a public park by Carlow County Council. Entering 
Exit the car park through the barrier and head up the road for a couple of metres towards the mansion. Then veer off to the right on this little scuffed trackway here that brings you up onto the grass. Now where we're heading is to the right of this tree here and we're trying to get a wide angle on the entire uh, building for the first composition. So taking a quick look at it from the air, um, where we're actually heading is back to the road that we drove in. And there's a small little tree there to the right of the large tree in the middle of the field. I am actually standing underneath that. But anywhere along the fence will give you the view of a wide expanse of the back or the side of the mansion as such. So you have a nice angle on it from there for the first composition. In terms of lighting, uh, the sun sets to the right of the right and rear of the building during September. I shot this on September 11th and you can see from the photographer's ephemeris here that the sun sets out to the right and slightly to the rear of the building. A sunrise shot would also work here because you can see that from the angle of the sun, the early morning sun lights up the back of the building and um, that nice soft light in the early morning might just give a nice atmosphere to it as well. More importantly I suppose is the position of the sun in December when hopefully we fi finally get out of this level 5 lockdown. So you can see the sun has changed a lot by December. So the sunrise in this case will actually come, you'll get some side lighting across the front of the house that we'll be looking at for the second composition. And the sunset would also light up the front of the house. But from where we are now, you might actually get some dramatic skies um, with the sun setting behind it as well. So it's just something to think about if we finally get out of here in December. So this is the first shot. And there's very little foreground around here, so what I decided to do was a long exposure. And there was huge movements in the cloud on the day, and um, thankfully I was able to take advantage of that and give the photo some drama, and I think the black and white works well with, with the type of image that it is. For the second composition, I'm just going to follow the railings down past the front of the house to the opposite side and we'll shoot then looking back towards this angle with the turret at the front. Even as I was making my way over, the sky had got very dark. It was still over an hour till sunset but the sky was very ominous looking and I was getting a bit worried this was going to rain at this stage. There's a rookery uh, in a copse of trees just to the right of the house as you're looking at it now. And they were flying around and the uh, sky was really ominous in that. So I decided to process it in that way. It was a little bit spooky and eerie. Now it's not to everyone's taste, but here's the image anyway. To finish the processing on the image, I put a texture on it and that gives it that bluish coal look. I also desaturated it a little bit and uh, just to give it that overall eerie and gritty feel. So yeah, that's, that's what it is. As I was walking back towards the car, the sun unexpectedly broke out from beneath this huge bank of cloud that had been there all day. So at this stage I was in the courtyard of the rear of the house itself and I just set up the tripod straight away thinking that it was going to be gone in a couple of minutes. So this one here is a blend of three images um, allowing for the, the light and also the shadows that were on the house because this side of the house would have been in shadow at that and they're blended together then in Lightroom. So after that excitement I headed back to the car park. I had one more composition in mind and that was to frame Duckett's Grove between the two huge trees on either side. Now again, as you can see from this, the, the cloud movement was, was colossal. So I was going for a long exposure. What I wasn't expecting an hour earlier was the light that had opened for the previous composition. So hopefully I was able to um, capture that and the clouds in the image. And here it is. 
The final image from Duckett's Grove. The sun dipped below the horizon, the sky lit up and those clouds just kept moving towards me. Looking at the image, you know, it appears that there is huge uh, lens distortion there. The wide angle making the nearer objects look bigger, etc. But when you're actually there, the trees are much bigger than the house itself and the house is a little bit back from it so there's going to be some distortion but the trees are huge so overall happy enough with this one to finish off an afternoon and evenings shooting at Duckett's Grove this last photo was taken way back in 2014 and it obviously shows the rapeseed sown all around Duckett's Grove on both fields um, on either side of the road and it just makes a fantastic foreground then against either a stormy sky cloudy sky blue sky it doesn't matter it really stands out and it helps stuck its grove itself to stand out now i don't know anything about crop rotation or the viability of growing rapeseed etc but if it is there again it, it really is a great opportunity to go and get that shot so that's it from me at duck its grove i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please leave a like or a comment below if you'd like to subscribe, you'll be notified of my next video. So until then, bye for now and stay safe.